The peak 200 and before that the peak 150 and before that many, many different controls as well, right? Uh, Wood Woodward's got a rich history of, of different control systems from mechanical governors on and, and between mechanical and, and digital was analog. So we had many different analog control systems and I talked about the 4327 but we also had 2301As and, and we also had, and, and those were more on the line, we tried to get from, from migrating from custom, because we used to do custom. Every, every, you know, an OEM or every customer would call us and said, hey, we need a control system that does this. And uh, so we found out for these, these general purpose machines, uh, that like API 611 machines, they call them general purpose machines, these smaller machines that, guess what, they're typically used in pumps and ID fans and force draft fans and, and small compressors and stuff like that. The requirements for those were pretty similar. And so instead of creating a custom one that uh, is over and over about the same, we decided in 1992 we created you know, what we called Peak 150. And the Peak 150 allowed us to take our experience from the last, from really the 80s, and all these custom control systems and say, well, if we were going to dial it down and just build a control system that was really focused on API 611 machines or general purpose machines, what would it include? And we really uh, uh, simplified it. We brought it down to really speed control and remote speed set point. Um, and so it allows us and, and, and realize that a general purpose machine is an integral part of the plant. And they may have many, many of those type of machines in the plant. So they need to be able to interface with that. And typically they interface with that through the plant DCS. So plant DCS, they need a nice interface with the interface to, to that turbine, and we allowed that through a, what we call a remote speed set point, a, really a four to twenty milliamp input in, into that control system. But the the real the core of, of a standard general purpose machine is there's going to be many out there, and there, there's the people operating in those machines are not engineers. They're not experts on the turbine. They're not. They have to walk up to that machine and look at that control system and immediately understand how it works, what its issues are, and be able to start it. It has to be just intuitive on how to start it, where the problem is. And so we designed that. It was fairly simple and fairly simple applications, right? Speed control with a little speed set point in, into it. But you got to start and stop the machine. Those are different. You have different speeds you need to operate at. You may have different ways you want to... Uh, to test the machine, uh, stop the machine, as well as we added another feature in there I, I talked about earlier, how people were shifting from mechanical governors and mechanical bolts to more of a safety. And we added some safety features in there. So now you have an overspeed protection in that unit itself. And so we're trying to bring safety into that market. And we did that with the Peak 150. So the Peak 150, was a step in that, in, in that direction, and it was very successful. So because I think we really focused on making it simple and, and really focused on general purpose machine, it, a lot of people used it, and a lot of people used it to, to upgrade from mechanical governors, as I was talking about earlier, maybe to get safety and maybe to make that, that more, their plant more automated. And, and so because of the success of that, and, and realize we, we shipped that for like 20, 22 to 25 years, we shipped the Peak 150, right? And so now we've migrated to what we call Peak 200. And so we went out there and, and uh, you know, the, the customers that have used the Peak 150 for many, many years, we interviewed them, got an idea what the issues were, what improvements they would make, what they would keep. And, we, and that was really the result of Peak, one, Peak 200 is take the Peak 150, take the TG Governors, take feedback from all our customers and, and, and put that together and create a specification for a simple to use product. Uh, and, and I say simple to use, we, in, we, we improved the, the uh, um, front panel on it. So now the front panel has a lot more information and that was one of the, one of the feedbacks was great product, but boy, it sure would be good if we had a little bit more information, what the shutdowns were, what the alarms are, what the health of the machine is, you know, what startup mode am I in, all that. So, so now we have that and we brought that to the front of the Peak 200. And so it's, it's transpired from, you know, you look at mechanical, analog, Peak 150, now Peak 200, but with the focus on keeping it so that the general purpose user out there and the general plant person 
can go out there and easily understand and operate the machine. As you know, we, we just released the Peak 200, right? You're just kind of rolling that out, and uh, people are starting to understand it, get excited about it, and understand really the advantages of, of migrating from some of the older controls, maybe the Peak 150 up to the Peak 200, or TG Governor up to the Peak 200. And one of the, what's interesting is, you know, quite often we thought, okay, it'd be the front display, people are going to like that, which, which they do. Um, and it's the usability, they're, they're going to really be excited about that. What we found, or we're finding from some of many of the, the users that are starting to migrate from Peak 150 up to Peak 200, is really the, the logs, the alarm and shutdown logs. The capability to go back after the plant shut down and figure out what shut us down. And so that, that type of logs, logging system and trending uh, now available on the Peak 200, it, it was a huge advantage for them. So migrating, we just, just re released the Peak 200. Of course, you know, the Peak 150 had about 25 years of experience, right? And, and, and of course, Woodward's got a long history of supporting our product lines. And we typically have about a 20-year support life after post-production. And uh, so we'll plan that for the Peak 150. However, we see a, a good migration from Peak 150 to Peak 200 for all the reasons I, I just talked about. Um, and for, from our side, uh, the Peak 200, it's just, uh, it just rolled out. But we, you know, we use the latest designs, the latest ICs, the latest, the, the latest resistors, the latest screens on there, NEC type of screen, right? So we don't see any reason why there should be any, uh, you know, any parts that have that are inactivated, that have an obsolescence issue for many, many years. So we look at, and we kind of design now for 15 or 20 years life on these product lines. So anybody that's looking at migrating can be assured that, okay, you know, they have another outage in five, six, 10 years from now, Woodward's still gonna be producing the Peak 200 for many, many years. So I, I see that for the next 15 or 20 years, people are gonna, going to uh, be able to use and, and really, uh, hopefully improve the automation of their plant and improve the usability of their plants with, with the Peak 200.